Yeah, it turns out. It also <laughs> turns out running this business is more than I ever expected it. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, I've never heard anybody say the opposite. Like, yeah, you know, my own company's less work than it should have been. Well, you know, I I wish I had. I mean, we can discuss this. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, well, Chris. Let's, yeah, well, let's we're at three years of podcasting. And I didn't realize how much work that was going to be. So yeah. I completely understand. So, yeah. all right. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Author It Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Doug DeMuro. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. As always, we're socially distanced. We did it way before it was mandated and cool. <laughs> Ross is in the Northeast. I'm in the Midwest. And Doug's all the way on the West Coast. So we're back to our normal mm-hmm. stretched out boundary. That's normally our time zones, our Eastern, Central, and Pacific. So, Right. It's a good <laughs> setup. It's easier, yep. it's easier to be six feet, but you guys are like a thousand miles each, 1,500 miles. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the, uh, 1400 inch. Yep. Yeah. I think I referred to something the other day for Ross and how many days it would take him to drive somewhere. <laughs> then again, yeah. I, that was back when Brad Brunel was like, that. yeah, swing by the place in Reno, grab something. I was oh, like, Brad, God. you're 24 hours away from me and I'm in the Midwest. <laughs> like, Brad, no. Brad's mentality is, oh yeah, it's uh, it's 2,100 miles away. That is 2.623 days on my motorcycle. Well, we're talking to the only other person I know who drives the most cross country right now. So. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. And you come like straight through my neck of the woods all the time. Yeah, and, uh, every summer we we I drive out, and every summer I drive back. My dog and me. You mean you don't like Nantucket in the Northeast in the middle of January? You know, I would, love, dude. You joke, but I if it was up to me, I would live in the Northeast. I would move literally tomorrow. If my wife came upstairs Man. right now during this podcast and was like, "Hey, you want to move back to the East Coast?" I'd be like, I'd be like, guys, I'm out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. No. <laughs> how long? Back. How long? Okay. So, so Chris's wife is from New York, and obviously we're from here. How long has it been since you li- since you lived in in the Northeast? Well, for I lived winter? in Philly. I lived in Phil- okay. So I grew up in Denver. It should be clear. So I, winters don't really phase me. Like I, I grew up in Denver. I lived in Atlanta, which has more serious winters than people realize. But then I'm ice, to, ice, ice baby. It has ice and it gets cold. And then I moved to, to, and it gets gray, which is really the most annoying part of winter. And then I lived in Philly for four years, but it's been four years, four winters since I've had winter, but mm-hmm. I don't, winter, I'm like, I'm all set. I'm fine. Okay. Winters in the, we, in the last like five years, we've had one good snowy winter and the rest of the winters have just been like dreary, rainy, <laughs> like, like Seattle, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah, no, it it's uh, who you are in Connecticut. I'm assuming you're near the Long Island Sound, like every like most people who live in Connecticut. Like, yes. it's not so bad, right? If you're upstate New York, we saw what can happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, Western PA yeah. or anything like that. But like, you yeah, know, I, if you, I would move to DC and I could, oh, I would give anything. But that ship has sailed. I've lost that fight. It's over. And I, it's hard <laughs> to complain because it is 70 degrees every <laughs> single day here. And it's perfect for my job. So that's you. That's you. Chris and I talk about weather. Uh, weekly almost daily and it's like yeah you know shooting car reviews and and taking pictures isn't really conducive to you know no. the, the Connecticut lifestyle or Kansas City, Kansas City has or KC KC's got some of the worst weather because you have incredible heat and you have like <laughs> significant snow and the combination of both is tough it the nice thing about it is it is a true mix that's that's a good like it, Positive spin on oh, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Take the good like, with the bad. You always hear those stories about people that live somewhere there and they're like, oh, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, it'll change. I feel like I feel that's like that's always stuff. embellished for other places, but where it's literally within a series of hours, it can go from 60 to like 25 degrees. And mm-hmm. you were just like, what happened? Like, yeah. and actually that's a bad example because the one that comes to mind, it was 85 degrees one day and the next day the high was like 15. And yep. so you were like, Hold up, that's legit summer temps to dead of winter temps. Yeah. Yep.
be all along on that. Um, <laughs> two other quick updates. Upcoming press vehicles are very exciting, and we'll talk about these on, on future shows. Hummer EV arrives this week, which is replaced the week after by the CT5V Blackwing. And they swapped that out for a 130, Defender 130, and then Yukon Denali. So I have a very I'm good... Ve- of very all of those, January the February. only one I'm interested in is the 130. The 130, I am keen to see in person and skeptical of what my eyeballs may or may not decide. I think it's the ugliest car on sale. <laughs> <laughs> I think the that reg- is a bold statement. The regular Defender is already kind of questionable. And I say that having owned it for two and a half years and driven 50,000 miles. Like every time I look, come up to it to this day, I'm like, eh, I don't know. But the 130 looks like my car wearing a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> is Sorry. the 500X still on sale? Uh, I don't think so. You thought the 500X was uglier? That car was so... No, I, isn't Fiat like totally out of the US market? Aren't they like gone, gone? I thought Ooh. they were supposed to be coming back with like a... Look at that. Look at that ridiculous thing. Oh. That absurd yeah, real- so- so they didn't the, lengthen the wheelbase at all. They just said, no, they did here's it an extra row. Right. They did it cheaply. And you know, the funny thing is the 110 already has a third row. So this is just a longer third right. row. But right. they did it cheaply that, yeah, there's no wheelbase extension like there was on those Trailblazer EXT. You remember that? Like, the Dude, GX- I was literally going to say the Envoy XUV and all of those. Yeah. Yeah. Those yeah, yeah. Stretched in the middle. This is not. This yep. is stretched in the back. It's like a bad render. <laughs> I think it's <laughs> famous. <laughs> well, I, uh, my my one comment is that the uh, the departure angle yeah, might leave something over. to be desired. That's over. So yeah, we'll see if I smack it on my driveway. But yeah, those those are the uh, the upcoming. That's a lot of glass roof in in their favor. I think, Dude, I think honestly, part of it is that we already are accustomed to the regular wheelbase. I actually think if this had come out like earlier or at the same time, it wouldn't be so bad. But looking at it now, you have spent two and a half years seeing the regular ones on the road. And then you see that and it's mm. like, what? But like when you look at a Yukon versus a Suburban, you don't have this thought because we're like, used no. to it. But maybe it's maybe it's just like going to take some time. But I think it's, it's like they put it on the copy machine and pushed 100 and, uh, 130 percent, but only on the back <laughs> section, <laughs> only on the ass. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so that uh, only other short, small update is, I mean, Chris and I've been talking about this for eons now. I'm still up in the air whether I keep the GX or get rid of the GX. And the decision is basically keep the GX or get rid of it and replace it with like a 200,000, 175,000 mile-ish 200 series. Um, Not sure. Just not sure. I love my 200. It's great. It's been great. The, yeah, the, but my GX has 32,000 miles. What year? 18. And so it's you, got a it's got so much. It's got, I mean, uh, Toyo sent me tires, Warren sent me a winch, it, light force sent lights, like there's an Ironman bumper and suspension. Yeah. You know, tire carrier on the back door. Um, yeah. the the dash cam that Glucker sent me definitely not like eight months ago has I installed last week because it definitely didn't sit in the box in my garage for for a few months before I remembered that it was there. Um, so it's like starting from scratch with a with a vehicle much older, but you know, much more. Or just do you think it's much more? It's twenty five percent. Like I've off road. Would you rather have a low mileage? Like the GX is still a V8 body on frame. It's everything that everybody likes about the 200. Yeah. But you have like it's low miles and newer. The the two big questions in this larger question are that the four six is inferior to the five seven. There's no. Oh, in, in terms of like power longevity. Is re- really interesting. Yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I mean. The 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 four six is like a two hundred and fifty two hundred seventy five thousand mile engine, and the five seven is like add fifty to seventy five thousand miles to that, which isn't really a problem for me because I work from home, and it only has thirty thousand miles on it. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought it at twenty seven. <laughs> so so really, yeah. that's some yes. Okay. That's that's a wash. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I I think Doug's on team. Keep it. Yeah, I have a 200 and I love it, but it, it hasn't quite been what I expected it to be. And I think the 200 has like, more, there's more like lore around it than reality, I think, really. 
Um, I don't well, think that there's a dramatic difference between the GX and the L and the 200 in terms of like what they can do, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay, that's well, fair. I mean, yeah, that looks so cool. And you've 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 already improved the the only bad part about that GX, which is that heinous front end. Oh my god, it was so bad, <laughs> man. I Mark. drove the first few days. I walked out to it, and I was like, nope, not it's not staying like this. Oh bad. <laughs> so you're gonna have to yeah, Batman yeah, it in. I mean, it's it, it, and I, I owe money on the GX, and I can potentially eliminate that by getting out of it. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eh. And could, two hundreds are going down in value so slowly. True, that is true. So yeah, it, we'll see. It, it's the last lane cruiser. Probably like, gonna stay. It's the two hundred, like for now. <laughs> yeah, for, for some now. BS thing, but it's the last real lane cruiser. I bet. Yeah. yeah. I, by the way, I love the three hundred. I think. I mean, the LX three hundred is great, but like, I drove a Toyota three hundred, and it was so great. I just so sad we don't get that. It's such a shame. But so whatever. that was on the on the list of things we wanted to talk about and we have a, 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 a not small list of things to talk about <laughs> right. so you've driven what is effectively three 300 series you've driven the sequoia the lx 600 and you got your hands on a, a real lc 300 right yeah and a tundra yeah so oh and and my uh <laughs> <laughs> continue i i ross isn't when, a big fan of the tundra uh, i had some issues Tundra, but continue. But you don't like how it looks, or did it have a problem or something? Um, it felt unfinished. It was. 